the question remains, why is it that we human beings are so obsessed with the notion of the absolute? Why is it that the absolute is so much and will always remain alive, whether we call it God or science or uh, uh, Stalin or whatever? No, no, there's no search for the... What is the absolute? Nobody's searching for the absolute. They wouldn't know whether... If it bit them, they wouldn't know. What is the absolute? Good question. Sorry to be difficult, but... Ever, ever seen an absolute in your life? How can you say... I mean, how would you, re how would you recognize it if you met it? It's not that. People... What religion is about, and the thing you think, is explanations for the nature of the world in which we live. And that's what religi religion is about. And many of our silly ideas are really explanations for things that we don't Do understand. Really? Now I'm trying to talk to you like, which I'm not, a <laughs> naive scientist, and I'm trying to beat you on your own terrain. Let me propose to you a paradoxical statement. Oh. If you ask today, majority of people, they would have probably said in Europe, yeah, in some sense, we are Christian. Then if you ask them, but Christianity means a certain set of theses. Do you remember, do you, sorry, do you really believe that 2,000 years ago, a guy was walking around in Palestina who was God? 15%. They did in Slovenia, maybe we are a perverted nature. You know what I mean? Read the book by, I think it was Pierre Vidal Nake. Did the ancient Greeks believe in their gods? where he demonstrated that it's clear that belief in practice means something else. They were not stupid. They didn't think if you climb on the top of Olympus, you would see there, I don't know, Zeus screwing Aphrodite or whatever. <laughs> it's not, it was something much more mysterious. It's more, you know, the paradox of belief, and here I think you should search for absolute, is that uh, first, we unconditionally want Meaning. Absolutely. Let me give you an example where I hope we will agree, and I think it's a nice example of ideology today. Why do we eat organic apples and buy them? I think most of us know probably this is to a large extent bullshit, but it makes us feel good. Yes. You buy organic apples, so, my God, I'm doing something great. I'm helping Mother Nature. It's a big solidarity movement. With I'm sorry, I don't buy organic. Oh, neither do I, my God. <laughs> no, I like genetic, nice. I want... No, sorry, but let me go on so, very briefly so that I stop. Uh, you, uh, so, uh, but so at some point, you know what's for me nonetheless the problem? And I appeal here again to you in all this. Listen, let's be clear. Something is happening today, nothing religious or whatever, which may affect the very meaning status of being human. Our very sensitivity, feeling or ourselves, doesn't it imply, I'm here, I think reality is out there. The moment you can, which up to a certain extent they can already do, I think, directly link to a computer your thinking so that for example, you no longer even need the famous Stephen Hawking. Uh, but I told my God in London, I saw it myself. They presented machine for crippled, I don't know what's the politically correct term, uh, where you just think forward and the machine moves. It's still very elementary, but all these plus genetic manipulations, sure. this is what I see as the real problem, not any metaphysical nonsense, of Nietzsche's Übermensch. Something will probably emerge, I'm not talking anything great, which is in conflict with many of very fundamental representations of what we think is to be human. And there are problems here, like maybe you know, Churchland, husband and wife, the great uh, cognitivist couple, they think that what they call folk psychology, our ordinary notion of us as free being, will have to fall. We will have to accept that we are fully uh, biologically determined and so on. But there are many other positions. So don't you think something important is going on? No, not at all. You don't think? No, absolutely not. <laughs> don't think there's here, any... Here, you are secret idealist. Because you think that we can do all things we can do to our bodies, yes. but sometimes we will, we will remain the same. Yes, more no, or I less. No, I don't think. You well, are well, too idealist well, we, here. Uh, but there are many things that go wrong with us where we don't remain the same. Uh, you know, you can have a mental illness, you don't remain the same. 
But that doesn't mean to say that everything is no, coming to I the end. No, what I claim is that, for example, if through biological chemical manipulations, yes, sure. I, can, I can fundamentally, in a serious way, sure. affect your, uh, your physical properties, even your uh, attitudes, your will to work. Listen, you don't have to go very far. You can take certain drugs and they will no, do no, that. No, no, but no. this is only the beginning. If you put no, this it's not, not the beginning. beyond a certain level, you think this will not affect, for example, the whole pedagogy falls away. Why should I learn when I can... You know what I mean? Oh, they haven't no, got no, no, anywhere no, no. like oh, that. No, no, no. I also have to contradict you. I'm also a biologist. Um, huh? some, some you also? I thought you were a friend. You are also a Some comments. What is absolute? Absolute is the fear of death. <laughs> the fear of death is absolute. And I think uh, you can see it in Mahler very clearly. <laughs> So how do you counter the fear of death? By creating a god. Now, that has been through all the civilizations. And of course, the evolutionists like Lewis or like Richard Dawkins even more, uh, some of them will fight religion. Uh, I, I don't think Lewis does it like Dawkins does, but uh, Dawkins fights it very aggressively. Now, that is, again, uh, impossible. Because uh, as a great evolutionist he is uh, Dawkins, he does not realize that the need to create a god in order to combat the fear of death is absolutely built into us by evolution. That is also absolute. Uh, sorry. We talk too much. Maybe we should try to write to, 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 to say uh, any, um, something about the absolute. Absolute is the opposite of temporality. Ewigkeit, eternity, is the absolute. And uh, temporality is the o opposite. We are now here, but we, we, we will not be <coughs> here in thousand, in, in hundred year, years. Yeah. This is the eternity, the, 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 the term of eternity. When this, these things were f f for Mala very important. This is the Christianity changes things here. In Christianity, absolute intervenes in time. It's no, something no, no, very I don't, weird. I don't speak, uh, speak about, about Christianity, oh, okay. Sorry, about yes. philosophy. Philosophy, about the question of existence. Existence, what is, is this, the existence? But one more thing. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea what the absolute is, but I'm a practitioner. I, I, I'm not a philosopher. I'm a, my, I make my living as minimal one by writing poems. And so let, I'm empirical. I read poetry. When you read poems from all the times, you see that half of the poems written, not only in the Western tradition, are prayers. They have the form of a prayer. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's an absolute. I'm not claiming this. It means that we are poets when they write, they're mostly by themselves, they're alone in their study, in, in the meadow. They don't need to be witty, like we need to be witty right now. But if you are an artist, you are uh, solitary, and you're, like Mahler was in his hut, you don't need to, to be witty. And the natural thing, or the traditional thing, is to say a prayer, because you think there is, you, you feel the presence, there is something else. You have no idea what this something else is, but you address your words or your music to something else. So there is a tension between you. Who are you after all? You don't have that much to say, but in the act of praying, in a, in a prayer, there is an, an, a, a, a tension between what you are and something else, and that's, for me, that's very important. Yes, who am I is, about is, is, a, is a crucial kind of a question. Uh, I'd like to focus our attention just on uh, different, uh, different kinds of problems. So if, if, if we talk about different kinds of knowledge, we get into big trouble, we get into big difficulties because there, 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 there are considerable differences in our views. But think about problems. What time is it? What day is it? What's the cause of AIDS? These, these are sensible problems that one can answer. If I ask the question, who am I, uh, uh, as I did for the first time, I realized I became a philosopher, I was 11 years old, I was standing in front of a mirror and asking myself, okay, that's what I look like, how do I know? How do I know that that's me? And after about 10 minutes, I had to lie down. 
Uh, I mean, you, you, just, you just don't get uh, an answer to that question, and, and nobody else can give me an answer to that question in a way in which they can gi give me an answer uh, uh, if I ask them what time is it, or if, I, or if I ask them what's the cause of a particular disease. Now, let's put this into the context of Gustav Mahler. I'm thrice alienated as a Czech among Austrians, as an Austrian among Germans, as a Jew in the world. There's this question for, I mean, uh, if, if, if we want to understand where Mahler's going, we should, uh, we, we should ask where he's coming from. He's coming from, he's coming from questions like this, which, which uh, are very, very hard to answer. I mean, the most intelligent thing anybody ever said about the problem of identity is that it's a mystery and not a problem. I'm referring to Gabriel Marcel. The, 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 because I'm part of the question, and I can't get out of myself to answer that question. So that they're, they're, they're... But you can get out quite a long way. Sometimes, with luck, with, with the help of what? Of, of philosophers? No. Not, not metaphysicians? No, uh, not with the help of, of artists? Oh, with the help of religion? But not all religion. I mean, that, that, that's the real problem. It's not the question of, I, I, of art versus science. It's not the question of, 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 of religion versus enlightenment. It's a, it's a question of what, which form, which forms uh, of, 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 of these uh, uh, bodies of knowledge are available to me? How can they help me?